move the money from your client's pocket into your pocket. Right, but if you can make a client's money at the same time, it's advantageous to everyone, correct? No. There's a secret trading program among the major banks of Europe and the U.S. where they trade bank securities in such rapid succession that they produce incredibly high rates of return. It's an exclusive investment platform open only to those able to invest at least $100,000, and it'll pay big. Oftentimes they want investments, a minimum investment of like $100,000. Some people have actually asked for $15 million in their investments. Unfortunately, it's a scam, says the FBI is that there's no such thing as a platform trading program. It's an investment fraud. It's a unicorn. There's no such thing. Several people in Hawaii were found guilty of the scam. A person who had just pleaded guilty here in Hawaii was soliciting $15 million from a children's charity in a platform trading program to try to get them to invest. For the crime is punishable by 20 years in prison. If you're approached, the FBI says, report it right away. If anyone is approached with the opportunity to invest in a platform trading program, a medium term note trading program, or something called a PPP, a private placement platform, they should call the FBI immediately. Hundred thousand dollars to fifteen million. Wow. That's huge money. It's you can see though why people get lured into that. And that's terrible that somebody was approaching a children's mm -hmm. charity for fifteen million. It's a good thing. Nobody. I don't care if you're Warren Buffett or if you're Jimmy Buffett, nobody knows if the stock is going to go up, down, sideways, or in fucking circles. Least of all stockbrokers. Mm -hmm. right? It's all a fugazi. You know what a fugazi is? No. Fugazi. It's a uh, fake. Yeah, fugazi, fugazi. It's a wazi, it's a woozy, it's a fairy dust. It doesn't exist. It's never landed. It is no matter. It's not on the elemental chart. It, it's not fucking real. <laughs> right? All right? All right. <laughs> Stay with me. Mm -hmm. We don't create shit. We don't build anything. No. So if you got a client <clears throat> who bought stock at eight mm -hmm. and it now sits at 16 and he's all fucking happy, he wants to cash in, liquidate, take his fucking money and run home, you don't let him do that. Okay. Because that would make it real. Right. No, what do you do? You get another brilliant idea, mm -hmm. a special idea, another situation, another stock to reinvest his earnings and then some. And he will every single time. Mm -hmm. And then you just keep doing this again and again. And again, meanwhile, he thinks he's getting shit rich, which he is on paper. Mm -hmm. But you and me, the brokers, right. we're taking home cold hard cash via commission, motherfucker. Right. Victims, today there will be some um, petitions in front of the European Parliament. The petitions are from people with iron forex. So uh, they asked the European Union to act against the. Uh, Cyprus authorities, financial authorities. It's, uh, in fact, it's uh, three petitions, but all the other victims from all the other online brokers like BN Binary, Avatrade, etc., they all are involved and they all are victims. The problem is that all these brokers are registered, or most of them, in Cyprus, and that the Cyprus financial authorities uh, do not do enough to take control about the things they have to do. So they, they lack about control. And that's today the situation here, that the victims, victims in fact from Hungary and from Italy, asked the European Parliament to look to this more and make it more strict. Because that's a loophole in the law, and these criminal online brokers, they use that law for their own purposes to scam the people every day, Billions of dollars, billions of euros are going to the criminal online brokers into their pockets. 90% of them are based in Israel. See those little black boxes? They're called telephones. I'm going to let you on a little secret about these telephones. They're not going to dial themselves, okay? Without you, they're just worthless hunks of plastic. Like a loaded M16 without a trained Marine to pull the trigger. And in the case of the telephone, it's up to each and every one of you, my highly trained Stratonites, my killers, my killers who will not take no for an answer, my fucking warriors who will not hang up the phone until their client either buys or fucking dies! Yeah! Phone 
phone and start dialing. Is your landlord ready to evict you? Good. Pick up the phone and start dialing. Does your girlfriend think you're a fucking worthless loser? Good. Pick up the phone and start dialing. I want you to deal with your problems by becoming rich. Yeah. All you have to do today is pick up that phone and speak the words that I have taught you. And I will make you richer than the most powerful CEO in the United States of fucking America. Yeah. I want you to go out there and I want you to ram Steve Madden's stock down your client's throats till they fucking choke on it. Yeah. Till they choke on it and they buy 100,000 shares. That's what I want you to do. Yeah. You be ferocious. You be relentless. You be telephone fucking terrorist. Now let's knock this motherfucker out of the park. The petitions to the European Parliament because it's a loophole in a European law. Uh, they are registered most of the Cyprus. The Cyprus financial authorities are lacking of the work they should do taking control about the activities from the uh, criminal online brokers. The problem is almost everybody can make such a website and let it be registered in Cyprus. There's not enough control. The victims do not have any protection. And that's where we are here because many victims lost millions of dollars of euros to these criminal online brokers. They manipulate the courses, they uh, block the accounts, they use fake names, they use fake offices. They are uh, registered in Cyprus and from Cyprus they are scamming victims, um, clients like they say, but in fact all the people are victims from all over Europe and everybody loses his money. It's absolutely time that this is going to be stopped and it's time that the European Parliament is taking action against this. The victims are there now for almost 10 years this is going on. It's the biggest financial scandal of our times, some experts say. It's the fastest growing industry in the internet. So everybody is clear about it, that the problem is going to be bigger and bigger every day and the European Parliament has to be stopped. Il s'agit d'Israël. Quel Mireille Bonnet a perdu 85 000 euros. Nous nous rendons au siège de l'entreprise dans l'espoir d'y rencontrer Thomas Delacroix, l'homme qui l'a manipulé par téléphone. For centuries, diamonds have been mined, cut and traded. Since the foundation of Israel, a young state in the Middle East, diamonds have been manufactured, exported and imported. One center, trusted and unique. An ongoing success story that continues to develop. Tradition. Innovation. Vision. The Israel diamond industry. Nineteen thirty seven. The first diamond factory and the first diamond trade club are established in the land of Israel. From that moment on, the diamond industry becomes an integral part of Israel's development. New immigrants from all over the world find employment in the evolving diamond industry. During the 1940s, the Israel diamond industry worked at full capacity. It has only moved on since then. 
1956, the first World Diamond Congress was held in Israel. The first of many. 1968, the Israel Diamond Exchange inaugurated its first building in Ramat Gan. Nineteen seventy eight saw the addition of Maccabi Building, and in nineteen ninety three, the Diamond Tower. In the nineties, Israel's diamond industry is propelled into the era of high technology. In nineteen ninety eight, the Rough Diamond Trade Hall is inaugurated signaling the Israel Diamonds Industries and Venture to become a global rough diamond trading center. Thus far, there's been almost no law enforcement within Israel, and the industry is going forward as usual. So Although you're saying that people in Israel are still selling binary options? Right. Thousands of people in this business? Thousands of people are waking up every morning and going to work and selling these binary options to people are they abroad. Selling only to people abroad. They're not selling to people in Israel. There, are, it's illegal to sell to people in Israel. I've heard that there are some companies that still sell to people in Israel, but the the vast majority of the money is abroad. Binary options is it more like fraud or like gambling? Does anybody actually make money? It depends on the company. I've heard. I've heard from brokers who worked inside the company that it was something like 98 to 99 percent of customers lost some or all of their money. What some of the companies do is they tell the brokers that it's up to you. In other words, if, if you have a client who wins $100,000 and you want to let them withdraw that money, you're welcome to, but that will be taken out of your commission for the month. So what happens in effect is that the vast majority of clients lose their money. So we're talking about a very, very crooked business that is owned in part by very wealthy, even known individuals here in Israel. That's absolutely right. That's absolutely right. Um, there's, there are a lot of ties to people. There are ties to people within the police. There are ties to prominent business people, ties to people who are connected to large newspapers. And therefore, it is an entrenched problem, and it may be difficult to root out completely. Are, have they been protected to some extent? Have the binary companies been protected? To your not, from what you could tell, from people in the police and from uh, some newspapers and, and others. When I interview people inside the industry, they say, "Yes, of course, I believe we have." protection. I believe that this industry is being protected by the government or at least law enforcement is looking the other way. I don't have any specific evidence of that. It's just rumors. So the story is not dead. Binary options continue even though the Knesset has held hearings about it and launched an investigation and even though it's illegal here in Israel thousands of Israelis are still making a living at something which is, which is certainly disreputable, and even the Prime Minister's Office of Israel has put out an announcement saying that this is, this should not exist. Right, they have, but that hasn't been backed up by any law enforcement action to shut this down. So where do you go from here with the story? You're going to continue on with the story? There's more to be investigated? There's more to be investigated. The industry, the industry is so large and it's been festering for over nine years that there are a lot of things left to expose. Dans les locaux, nous découvrons une ambiance festive et décontractée. C'est probablement de cette salle que celui qui se présentait comme Thomas de la Croix appelait Mireille Bonnet. Peut-être même que Thomas figure sur cette vidéo que nous avons retrouvée sur internet. Parmi ces vendeurs de FXGM, qui se filment eux-mêmes en train de célébrer les succès de leur entreprise. D'ailleurs, alors que nous entrons dans le bureau de la recruteuse, une cloche retourne. In, in Israel, 
this one it is. Yeah. Simona wine glass for time. Okay. So this one is okay. But it would be interesting to, to start a story, yeah, for you. Okay. And now they tell you, look, when you are on the internet searching for a broker to do some to investment, yeah, yeah, you yeah. think they're serious. And they're all, 90% of them are scam. Oh. They take your money, they manipulate yeah, courses, yeah. they block your accounts. And the strange thing is, they are all registered in Cyprus. Uh -huh. But Cyprus has a very, it's because of, Cy they're registered in Cyprus, so they can do their business in all Europe before, because of mm -hmm. MIFID, that's a yeah, law. Yeah. So yeah. financial uh, services in all Europe is possible, mm -hmm. but you cannot control that because Cyprus is doing nothing. Yeah, yeah. That's the problem behind it. So they scan people and billions, billions of people. In fact, three petitions from victims from criminal online brokers, in this case Iron FX, but it's also Avatrade, Bean Binaries, and all the other brokers because 90% of them are registered in Cyprus and 90% of them are criminals. They are scamming their clients, they are blocking their accounts, they are manipulating courses. This has to be stopped. Most of these online brokers are just criminals to take the money from the victims. And uh, today we will ask the European Parliament to stop this. It has to be stopped. It's absolutely time. The governments cannot do anything. It has to be stopped on European uh, level. So therefore today European Parliament is trying to get this done fast. Uh, this case shows how Cyprus supervision authorities have violated fundamental provision of the EU Directive on Markets and Financial Instruments, which is the MIFID Directive. Uh, Ironetics Global uh, has not been complying for months with uh, the operation obligation laid down in Article 13 of the MIFID Directive. The particular respect to the safety of client funds. Under Article 17 of the ESMA regulation, ESMA has the power to open an own investigation. Uh, my question why they are not doing this and why it is not transparent. So I don't see there is any investigation running. Uh, this that the huge number of client complaints addressed to the ESMA, ESMA did not launch this investigation. Also, there is a lack of uh, transparency by the European authorities. Um, another fundamental factor which has made possible due to impunity of Iron X Global is the lack of transparency of Cypriot and European authorities. In respect to the measure taken against this conduct by financial market participants, uh, consumers don't know if the European authorities are investigating or making measures against uh, private and companies. So I don't have that much clients experience this lack of transparency every time they complain to the European authorities. I thought the committee meeting was interesting because it veered between really, really powerful testimony on the part of some of the victims saying what happened to them or people inside the companies where, you know, some things that really pulled on your heartstrings because it was so upsetting and then sort of the technical debate over whether you need new legislation to stop this or whether the Israeli law enforcement has the power to stop this right now. And, and um, I think it was interesting, and I think Kareen El-Harar summed up at the end that, um, that yes, they should advance new legislation, but at the same time there are tools that law enforcement can use to stop what's going on right now. After, after 10 years in which a very crude fraud was allowed to go un tackled, we had a meeting of the, of the powerful Knesset committee uh, whose chair fumed that the police didn't bother to attend and who is demanding to know why the police weren't here. We heard the head of the Israel Securities Authority talking about the legislation he's drawing up to outlaw some of the more sophisticated elements of binary options fraud. But you, we were able to impress upon a Knesset committee that a lot of it is very basic theft and misrepresentation and uh, we brought a, a, a victim from, from England who was able to talk about what he personally lost. We had somebody from within the industry who talked about what goes on. Uh, you know, this, this is not the, the end of the plague of binary options, but it's a step in the direction of tackling it seriously. The truth of the matter is, is that the enforcement authorities and the Israeli government should uh, stop ignoring the uh, solution and um, 
And the solution should be simple. There should be a criminal ac uh, uh, action against the fraudsters. Um, uh, the Israeli authorities, the Israeli government should see a way to compensate the victims and um, that's basically, that's the only way to improve the damages uh, that, that was caused already to the image of Israel. Um, Misschien gaat het verkeer bij een ander dat ze schrok of zo. Zo dacht ik. Ja. Ja, dat, ja. dat vragen ze wel inderdaad. Now we are in the European Parliament and we are here on behalf of all the victims from all the criminal honor brokers. We had a very short talk with ESMA already, the European Financial Authorities. And of course they said it's all in the law, they're hiding themselves because of the paragraphs, the law, etc. etc. We tried to explain to them that because of the law they have to act and they said already no. They will explain it in a few minutes during the petition. Um, yeah, that's the problem. Everybody is hiding behind the law to make it possible for the criminal online brokers to scam the victims every day. But finally we get more and more attention and I think it's very important that we are here, that more and more people who are a victim also join us. Do not be afraid about publicity because we will, we will um, be, make sure that you are not in the publicity if you do not want it. But please share. Sit down, put your hands, legs, be seen, and shut up! Don't you fucking shut up! You can't 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 fucking sh